Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we have a brand new platform from Intel. This is the LG8 2011 platform which supports Core i7 processors with 2011 pins on the bottom of them. It also adds support for a bunch of exciting new features including some cool new RAM benefits as well as PCI Express benefits. So stay tuned, we're going to tell you all about Intel's new flagship platform LGA 2011 with the X79 chipset. So to enclose our brand new platform from Intel, we've actually chosen a brand new case from Antec. So I've got the Antec website up here. This is the P280, which adds a ton of features to Antec's Performance One line of chassis that honestly has been a little bit stagnant in terms of innovation since the P180. The P180 turned everything in the case industry completely upside down from a silence perspective, from a performance perspective, from a design perspective, and the P280 really brings that tradition back in a lot of ways. So we see staples like the uh, double layered side panel, so you can see we've got a polycarbonate layer here, which is going to help us reduce vibration as well as deaden noise. So that's on there. I'm just going to pull this guy off. Um, on the front of the case, you actually see we do have a 270 degree door. So I'm going to go ahead and open that just like that. We have sound dampening foam as well. Check this out. The gamers are going to love this. Easy to clean filter. You throw it back on. Boom, just like that. So no hassle to clean the filter because a lot of them you gotta like take out screws, stuff like that. Only three five and a quarter inch bays, USB three and more about that in a minute. And then the power and reset switches have actually been moved to the top. So you don't even have to open the door in order to access them. Another cool thing airflow wise. So you saw that fan filter. There's space for two 120 mil fans in the front. Tons of room for airflow. These are completely open vents and the air can easily flow into the, into the inside of the case through these vents, through the filter, so that you don't actually have these fans just suffocating and not able to get any air. Built-in pressure SSD mount, so you don't even have to use screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, three and a half inch drive sleds. And then also they are compatible with two and a half inch drives. So that is where the three five and a quarter inch drives comes in because Antec has gone to more three and a halfs and fewer five and a quarters. Cable management features are included, power supply, Fan filter is also included, easy to remove and clean, not accessible from the back of the case, but rather from the side, so it's easier to get at. You have support for XL ATX motherboards. So the one we have in here is only ATX, so there's a little bit of space at the bottom, but check that out. Nine expansion slots, as well as support for 120 mil water cooling units. And in the top, you can see we've got dual 120 mil fans, so we could actually install a dual 120 mil water cooling unit if we so desired. Now let's talk about the features of this new platform from Intel. If I put this down here, can you still see okay? Awesome. All right, so here we have the Intel Core i7-3960X. That is an extreme edition processor cooled by Asa Tech or Intel, however you want to look at it, because we are using Intel's new liquid cooler. Now these new CPUs, both the extreme edition as well as the K-Unlocked 6-core processor, are not coming with stock heat sinks. So you can either buy an Intel air heatsink, which I really wouldn't recommend. If you're spending, you know, five plus bills on a CPU, you might as well get a decent cooler for it and overclock it because these CPUs are capable of pulling over 200 watts through the socket when they're overclocked. It's a lot of heat to dissipate. So we're cooling it with this guy right here. And uh, where was I going with that? Let's just move on. So we've also got support for eight DIMMs of memory. We've never seen this before on a desktop platform. Remember, we're used to seeing four DIMMs on the consumer stuff. We saw six DIMMs of triple channel memory on LGA 1366. Well, now we have support for up to 64 gigs currently with eight gig DIMMs and support for up to 128 gigs on this platform in the future. So why did we need a new platform? We needed a new platform because LGA 1366 with its triple channel memory was fine for six core, but 
not necessarily fine for quad channels and potentially more CPU cores moving forward. So Intel has revitalized their very, very high-end platform with 2011 promising us support for more memory as well as more cores on the CPU moving forward. For people who invested in LGA 1366, I think they had a really good run. That platform was a high-end platform for three plus years and I hope that we're going to see the same thing out of LGA 2011. Now let's move on to the PC PCI Express configuration. We've only got one card in here, but upcoming graphics cards are going to be PCI Express Gen 3, which means that they are going to support double the bandwidth over the PCI Express bus that current generation cards do. So Intel X79, that's the chipset powering this ASUS board, supports PCI Express Gen 3 16x, 16x, full bandwidth for dual cards. That will be up to four times the bandwidth of SLI cards on a Z68 chipset. Yes, because Z68 is Gen 2 8x 8x, so we're doubling the bandwidth to 16x, and then we're doubling it again by moving from Gen 2 to Gen 3. Huge stuff, huge bandwidth. So if you want to run three cards, you're going to be running 16, 8, 8, but remember, even 8x PCI Express Gen 2 3 is the same as 16x PCI Express Gen 2. Now other than the things that come along with this platform, so the PCI Express 3.0, that's up to 16x, 16x, or 16x, 8x, 8x for three-way SLI or Crossfire configurations or whatever other cards you want to put in there, RAID cards, LAN cards, who knows what else you need high bandwidth for. Other than that, let's talk about the unique ASUS features. So they're on their sixth generation of digital VRM, that is the power delivery system, which includes digital VRM for the RAM. ASUS decided that due to the complexity of the PCB design and the complexity of providing power to all of these DIMMs on, in such a small form factor, they were going to do digital VRM for their RAM as well which in theory should assist in RAM overclocking whenever you're overclocking on this platform. They've also introduced a couple of other things. Intel does not support SRT or Smart Response Technology on X79 by default, so ASUS has added a third-party controller that does support an SSD caching feature. So we're going to check that out probably in a future Tech Tips, as well as their USB 3 performance boost features. So you can actually use USB 3 in legacy mode, SCSI mode, or even U. UASP. So what UASP is, is a way of utilizing the USB ports to drive up to 100 megabytes per second more bandwidth in a real world scenario with a compatible UASP device. So we're going to get a UASP device and we're definitely going to have a look at that in the future as well. A couple more things they've added. They've enhanced their TPU and EPU modules, which allow the TPU is for performance and it allows you to use automated overclocking and tuning features to turn up the speed of your computer. And the EPU allows is basically undervolting profiles, which allow you to make your system slightly more energy efficient without impacting performance at all. A couple more things, USB uh, BIOS reflashing. So just by holding a button on the back of the board, you can reflash your BIOS, low level reflash it, just by having the correctly named file somewhere on that, or well, in the root directory, I would hope, on that USB drive. You don't even have to have a CPU or RAM installed in the board. So if Intel releases a new CPU and your board's not flashed to the right BIOS, you try and install them, no post, update to the latest BIOS, using that feature, no big deal. You don't even have to get a spare CPU in order to flash it. And last but not least, and this is part of the AI suite features that we're going to be having a look at shortly here, is their new updated fan expert controls. So fan expert used to allow you to make some slight changes to the way that your fans ran. Well, now you can actually set custom performance curves according to five, five different PWM fan headers on the motherboard. So you can set the temperature you want and the target percentage RPM just by dragging the points around on the chart. I think you have to put them in places that somewhat make sense. Actually, I haven't really, I haven't really played around with this yet, so bear with me here, guys. But yes, you can set custom curves for all five of the different fans, and then the sixth fan header actually runs in mimic mode with the CPU fan header. So six of them can be controlled according to the temperatures that they are sensing and what speeds you want them to run. So let's have a look at some of the things included with 
AI Suite too. So in the tools here, we've got a bunch of different stuff. There's Turbo V Evo, which uses the TPU to adjust your performance settings. We've also got the Digi Plus Power Control, which allows you to adjust things about your CPU power. Here you go. You can adjust the current capability, the CPU current capability, the load line calibration, as well as the VCCSA load line calibration. So that is for the DRAM controller. You can adjust all kinds of great stuff like the CPU power phase control, as well as your spread spectrum, CPU fixed frequency versus auto, all that kind of good stuff. So you can go back, you can minimize it again. The navigation needs probably a little bit of work, but the controls, the actual settings that are in here are outstanding. So Probe 2 is going to give you all of your voltage readouts, your temperature readouts, your fan speed readouts, your preferences. We don't actually have many fans plugged directly into the motherboard right now, so nah, that one is not as useful to us, but it is in there. Fan Expert Plus, when I tried to show this before, I did not have it set on user configurable, so that's why it wasn't working. So now I can set which fan I want to control, which settings I want to use. You've got silent, turbo user, standard, and disable. So that'll just run the fans at full speed all the time. USB 3.0 boost allows you to adjust the mode in which your USB devices are running. So you can set turbo mode, which enables the SCSI protocol, or UASP, which is that newer one that is much faster, and they're both faster than normal. So UASP only works on supported devices, which are coming soon, whereas turbo will work on anything to accelerate your USB 3.0 performance. ASUS SSD caching, when it works, Oh, you know what? I don't think I have the app installed right now. But ASUS SSD caching, the way it works is rather than forcing you to go into the BIOS and adjust your RAID settings, all you do is install the OS on a hard drive, which I don't have my OS installed on, which could also be the reason for the error. You install your OS on a hard drive, you throw in an SSD, you enable it, and boom, it's done. There, you don't even have to restart it to enable or disable the caching feature. Monitors basically show us everything that we saw before, sensor, CPU frequency. We can also update. We can view the system information, which probably isn't anything particularly interesting that we haven't seen before. And last but not least, we've also got settings in here. So there's a lot of different stuff, including the auto-tuning feature I talked about before. ASUS claims that with their auto-tuning feature, you can actually achieve up to about a 4.5 to 4.6 gigahertz clock speed on the Extreme Edition processor that we're using here. So that is pretty phenomenal for a pre-canned overclocking feature. So Sandy Bridgey brings a couple of things to the table. For the workstation users, the 3D renderers, the video editors, this is hugely important because now we have support for even more RAM on the desktop compared to LGA 1366. We have support for better instructions per clock performance, IPC performance, versus the previous generation Bloomfield and Gulftown processors. So we have basically six Sandy Bridge cores in one package and more RAM support. That's very good news for them. For the gamers out there, we get some advantages as well. So we've got awesome overclocking, more cores once again, more RAM once again, and we've got support for high bandwidth interfaces for our graphics card. That is dual 16x Gen 3 PCI Express slots, or we can split it up. We can go 1688 for three-way SLI or Crossfire. And because it's Gen 3, it's going to have as much bandwidth on an 8x PCIe Gen 3 slot as there was on a PCI Express 16x slot using Gen 2 technology. So what is this? It's pretty much more of the same, more better. It's also, for someone upgrading today, a more, um, something that you can buy with more confidence than necessarily a mainstream platform. In the time since 1366 launched, we've seen 775 turn into 1156, turn into 1155, and now we're getting a new 1155 Ivy Bridge, which is not necessarily compatible with the old 1155, not nearly as stable, whereas, Boards that were released for X58 LGA 1366 on day one are still compatible with the six core processors that were released much later down the line on that platform. So you're getting something that's going to be compatible with up to 64 gigs of RAM in the future, eight core or even beyond processors in the future, and I think you get an overall better performing and more future-proof platform. Thank you for checking out our overview of LGA 2011. 
in the year 2011. Who knows when you'll be watching this, though. And don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more reviews, tutorials, overviews, and other videos from your favorite retailer, NCIX.com.